In today's video, we are finally building an electric pocket rocket that fits in a car trunk. Ever since I bought my very first property with a garage, I've dreamed of building an electric go-kart that could fit into a car for easy transport to fun rides anywhere. The more I thought about it, the more I realized the biggest obstacle was the size of the regular go-kart frame. The widest part of a typical go-kart is about 135 cm, but the space inside my car is only 99 cm wide. To make this dream a reality, I had to downscale the frame both in width and length. I went through a quick life design process to get a better idea of the build. I narrowed and shortened the base, replaced the front wheels with the beefer ones, and roughly positioned the motor and the steering components. It wasn't the comfiest place to sit and steer, but with a bit of seat raise, the situation improved tremendously. I think we got it. Let's build it. I moved the go-kart inside because my initial plan to work in the fresh air was quickly ruined by the light summer rain, which turned in a heavy downpour in 30 seconds. Yeah, it's good to have a garage. To get a better access to the frame, I raised it on a jack stand and removed all the plastic parts. Instead of ruining a good Italian frame, I bought a cheap go-kart donor on eBay cut it and narrow it by 30 cm in the front and 17 cm in the back. I also shortened the whole frame by removing a 23 cm section. To save your time and mine, I did all the metal work of camera. After powder coating, the frame looks like this. It is painted in RAL 6034 color if anyone is curious. Those cutouts of 17 and 23 cm may not sound like much but the difference is very noticeable when comparing the frames side by side. Ok, let's dive deeper in what, why and how we modified the regular go-kart to create this mini version. Starting with the front spindles, I took the left spindle from the go-kart, flipped it and mounted it on the right side of the new frame. A small modification was needed. Here is the modified spindle compared to the factory one. I ground down a part of the spindle support to create extra space allowing wheels to turn more from lock to lock. Once again, I used left spindle from a go-kart and mounted it on the right side of my new frame. This moved the steering column and rods to the front, giving more space inside for feet. Since I wanted to use wide rear go-kart wheels in front, I used a front spindle hub for free hole wheels. I placed the hub, added some spacers and tightened the nut for perfect bearing application. Not too tight, but also not too loose. After installing the second spindle, I moved on to the steering column. Three places weren't suited to my build needs, so modifications were necessary. The plastic holder of the column shaft was worn out and had a lot of play. I cut out the bottom part and welded in a new pipe with a few additional modifications. First, I made a small extension with a single hole to connect the steering rod ends, which improved the wheel turn angle, also known as lock in drifting world. Second, the worn out plastic column holder was replaced with a pair of bearings and DIY holder made from a piece of pipe. Lastly, I welded in a steering wheel adapter rejecting the original go-kart option since it was badly worn out. Now it has a lifetime warranty with zero play, no matter how hard you abuse the steering wheel. Let's connect those spindles with the steering column. The rods and ends came from the donor, and the only modification was shortening them. My rods had threads inside along the length, making this modification super easy. Since they were factory parts, installation was straightforward. Now let's revisit that ground spindle part I showed earlier. The modified spindle shape follows the frame and allows the steering wheel to turn at maximum angle. This is crucial when you are going sideways and trying to keep drifting with the wheel turned to the max. Here are the power plant components that will be installed in the frame. A small, light but powerful brushless motor with a 14 seat sprocket. It is rated for 48 volts and 1.2 kilowatts, but I'll push it up to 9 kilowatts peak power on 60 volt system. It was removed from an LMX off-road bike, the LMX 161. The same motor can be bought brand new online, I leave all the used parts links in the video description. I'm using a Nuclear 12F controller with a nuclear display, and a thumb throttle from an electric scooter. 
For the battery, I built it from scratch, including a DC breaker on the power line, XT90 connectors and a charging port. Inside this aluminum box is a battery built from EPLB cells. These cells are modular and can be easily stacked in different series and parallel configurations. The bus bars are made from nickel-plated aluminum. My current battery pack is a 16S 2P configuration. It is capable of delivering up to 200 amps continuously and up to 400 amps peak discharge current. To ensure safety and proper battery operation, I used an AND BMS, which matches the battery's capabilities. It is great and powerful BMS with control option via smartphone app. Now I need to assemble everything in the frame. I'll start with mounting the heaviest part, the battery box. I made the battery compartment with a small tolerances to avoid any slack and rattling during rides. A bracket and M8 button head bolts will keep the battery in place. For a circuit breaker, I welded a DIN style rail piece from the frame, so installation was straightforward. It is secure and won't move. Now I can secure the main power wire at the output and install a charging port with an XT30 connector and a fuse. The controller has a dedicated spot sitting close to the battery, but with enough clearance for air circulation and proper cooling. To move on with the wiring, I started with the display wire which should go to the front. To achieve a slick look without dangling zip-tied wires, I managed the wires inside the frame tubes. I made an intermediate stop with an additional hole to change the wire direction. It is small price for such a neat and almost wireless look. Next, I secured the steering wheel and started to look for an optimal position for a thumb throttle. The best position was on the right side of the steering wheel, allowing me to hold the wheel firmly and press the throttle with my thumb. Based on the thumb throttle and steering wheel measurements, I designed an adapter in Fusion 360. To get maximum print quality, I used PCBWay.com. I uploaded my file, selected the desired materials and finish, in this case black resin, and got an instant quote. If you are working on projects like mine, PCBWay offers a wide range of services, including high-quality PCBs, CNC machining, laser cutting, injection molding, and 3D printing in various plastics and metals. Just upload your file for an instant quote, choose from varieties of services and materials, and they take care of everything so you can get the parts shipped directly to your house. I've used these services several times in the past and had really great experience. So check them out using the link in the description below. As always, everything inside was well packed. The print quality is excellent, just as expected with SLA resin printing. I wired in the throttle wire and mounted it on the steering wheel. The throttle holder blends in with the steering wheel, looking like it's made from the same material. The open end was closed with a 3D printed cap from the same material. The display was positioned to be clearly visible through the steering wheel opening. I secured it with an M5 hex bolt and connected the throttle and system wire from the controller. After closing the lid, the front part of the go-kart was finished. The throttle wire has the perfect length from lock to lock without any tension. The motor mount was made from 3mm steel. I tried some weight reduction by drilling holes and shaping the sidewalls. I used the same 3mm steel plate on the frame with oval shaped holes to adjust and secure the motor position. Four M8 hex bolts did the job. Left them slightly loose so I could adjust the motor position. On the rear axle, I used all the needed components from the donor. Also, I had to relocate the sprocket because originally it was on the opposite side. The most noticeable difference was the length, which I shortened about 40 cm. Using the original go-kart bearing carriers and frame brackets, installation was as simple as securing a few bolts. I placed the chain on the motor's 40-foot sprocket and then on the rear 68-foot sprocket. I pushed the motor forward to tension the chain and secure the motor mount bolts. The last crucial component was the brakes. The donor has a hydraulic brake setup. To install it on the frame, I had to manage the hydraulic braided hose. It might sound funny, but the easiest solution was to make a hole in the frame and run the hose through it. The downside was disconnecting the hose, which leaked some brake fluid. Extra cleaning and brake bleeding were needed afterwards. The braided hose was secured with a zip ties to avoid damage during rides. 
Then I installed the brake caliper with a pair of bolts and the right amount of hand measured Newton meters torque. The brake pedal assembly was also reclaimed from the go-kart donor, along with the brake pedal mounting holder on the frame, making this installation smooth and easy. Now we have functional brakes, sweet! I love how it is coming together. To move further, I need to connect a few last wires to the controller, the XT90 for power, three phase wires to the motor, and the last connector to the motor hole sensors. All are well insulated and safely rest on the battery box. I am pleased that I managed to fit all the electronics into this small space, resulting in a flat surface above with four holes to mount a seat. I bought a plastic seat from IKEA for 20 euros. It is a proper sized seat, unlike those cheap undersized drift track seats online. An adult can sit comfortably in it. The seat was secured with four M6 bolts into the seat threaded inserts. I'm not sure how long it lasts since the seat was designed as a desk chair, not a power vehicle seat. Finally, it is time to mount the wheels and call the assembly process finished. Take a look at that small thing. Maybe it just seems too cool to me because I spent so many hours working on it. What do you think? Does it look cool or not? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Here is the seating position for a 194cm tall guy. Since I designed it, it for myself, I feel very comfortable in it. The steering wheel, brake pedal and circuit breaker are in the right places and is accessible. For the charger, I'm using the same type of connector found on popular electric bikes like Suron and Talaria. The power button is under the display. A short press boots up the system. I won't dive into the display and controller features, as it will take at least half an hour. All I'll say is, this controller is awesome and affordable in terms of price, size and performance. Ok, enough talk. Let's test this thing. If you've never ridden anything electric before, you should try it. The instant torque and acceleration are just insane. It feels even more intense on such a low machine with no suspension. You feel every road bump and uneven surface, but it also gives great control and response from the steering wheel. Regarding speed, with the current gearing it goes 50 km per hour uphill and 52 km per hour downhill. Don't tell anyone, I'm slightly over the speed limit here. Every time I start this thing, the acceleration puts a smile on my face. It is hard to believe such a small motor can provide so much fun. Compared to a regular go-kart, there is no doubt which one is more compact and eye-catching. Even parked alone, it looks sick in my opinion. A true pocket rocket on wheels. And the best part? It fits in the car, so I can take it anywhere I want. Speaking of taking it to places, here is a sneak peek of an upcoming video. I just got a pair of plastic sleeves for some nice sliding action in a city. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next video with this fun little machine. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye!